Hi everyone, this is Susil Jain. Today we discuss Google Cloud Basics. And next video we will discuss AWS and as well as Azure. So in these days you know many organizations are looking at making the jump to the Google Cloud Platform. So let's talk about Google Cloud Computing with traditional IT computing. We have an on-premises computing environment which requires capital investment in hardware. We then have to power the equipment, we have to assure that we have proper HVAC that heating, ventilation and air condition to make sure that you can run smoothly. So next video, uh, sorry, next slide. We discuss these uh, topics. What is cloud computing? Introduction to service in cloud computing. The GCP environment infrastructure. What is public cloud? What is private cloud? what is community cloud and hybrid cloud and what is SARS, EAS, PAS and DRAS. So we cover these uh, topics in coming slides. So first we what is the cloud computing. So as you know everyone move from legacy data center to cloud. So now in the cloud, we are talking about hosted IT services on the Google Cloud Platform that are Google equipment in their data center around the world. That includes server, storage, database, web apps and so on and just like a utility such as electricity with cloud computing, we pay for the services that we use. There is also self-provision on demand where we can either programmatically click or form a command line or using a GUI. We, pay, we can provision cloud resources, deprovision them if we need less. Also the services are all accessible over a network such as internet, but we should always be careful with cloud computing to avoid vendor locking. And we want to make sure the means that we have the ability to export data to standard formats or to migrate data to other provider should we have a need in the future. In the cloud, there is often shared responsibility of taking care of it. The IT workload running in the cloud but the degree of the, that responsibility depends on the specific cloud service that we are talking about. For example, we were talking about a hosted database in the cloud. Maybe the underlying virtual machine operating system and data are taken care of by the cloud provider. So many responsibility does however means more control. Hardware is the provider's responsibility whether we are talking about network router and switches, storage arrays, physical hyper your server and so on. The software in some cases we will be provided responsibilities such as in the case of something like Gmail. However, the subscriber has some responsibility in terms of using it and configuring it to serve their business need. So it's a little bit of bot in the case with software. When it comes to the creation of user and group and its Google Cloud, Pro, Cloud Platform, that's called IAM, Identity Access and Management. That's the subscriber responsibility. It's not Google responsibilities. Just like the creation and management of data is the subscriber responsibility. Security, in some case, can be the subscriber responsibility but the provider also has a role in that in making sure that their data center 
the equipment and the staff are all failing under the appropriate security recommendation to run a proper IT cloud environment. The network connection, of course, it's a subscriber responsibility, and that's why often it's paid to have redundant link. Ideally, through different internet service provider to assure that we can get to the Google Cloud. Google manages the physical data center facilities that house all of the lack of equipment, so they deal with things like hardware physical security, such as locking of acts of the equipment. They deal with physical network infrastructure, link and the virtualization infrastructure which really means having the hypervisor that can run the virtual machine like that. Uh, the subscriber has a responsibility with the virtual machine instance that they might deploy. How they configure the and create policies such as how to control firewall rules and also have to control data retention that is under the subscriber responsibility. In this case dealing with other credentials where the for example multi-factor authentication is configured is the subscriber responsibility such as whether data at rest of the data in the transit and encrypted and also why type of data restored are being used to hold cloud based storage information the cloud really has a number of characteristics such as resource pooling having all of these responsibilities available for cloud control. So these all are resource. Broad network access allow access over the network using any type of devices. The network in this case being a network cloud computing also has a characteristic of having on-demand self-provision. Usually that's done through a web interface. So for example, if a client required more stages, they can simply click a few button and it does very quickly. It's major or uh, matter service and that's how we pay for our uses of cloud computing. The rapid elastic is the result of both result pooling and self-provision whether we can rapidly in our example deploy more storage or even more virtual machine as required.